April 19th, 1995 in Oklahoma City. There was an explosion. The Federal Building. Right here is where it was. At 9.01, the bomb went off. It's 9.01, folks. We're at the museum here. There are some security guards. It's almost 27 years later, and there's we've got security guards right here on this property of the museum. We're going to take a tour today. We're going to go to the museum. We're going to walk the grounds. The youngest person killed. We're going to go to her grave. So this is a self-guided tour on two levels. As we see here, it's kind of an interactive map of what we're going to do. April 19, 1995. Just like communities everywhere, it was the start of a day like any other day. Downtown Oklahoma City. Here we go. So off to the left here, we got some messages. Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. And these are the actual letters that were on the building with holes in them from the explosion. Here are other parts from the day's events. Elevator control panel blowing off the Murrow building and retrieved from the east side of the Anthony building, 120 feet north of the building. And here's the axle from the truck bomb, from the truck itself. And a front wheel. And the license plate. Diana Bradley is discovered by rescuers and she's pinned under the rubble and covered by dust. Her leg is pinned under a beam. These are the items used by Dr. Andy Sullivan to free her. This rope here was used as a tourniquet and he used that pocket knife to do a through the knee amputation. Wow. Here's the shirt Timothy McVeigh was wearing when he was arrested. And the leg irons put on him. 
they even have right here 25 no smoking this is the door off of the hotel room he stayed in and the sign from the hotel dreamland this place has a lot of awesome items Hundreds of people bought these little booties for the dogs because they were cutting their feet on glass when they heard that the dogs, the rescue dogs, were cutting their feet on glass. There was hundreds of those donated. And here's the single image that becomes the symbol. In this image, Oklahoma City police officer John Avera carries Bailey Allman from the Murrow building and hands her over to Oklahoma City firefighter Chris Fields. And this is the photo of Chris and her, which become a Pulitzer Prize winning photo. She was the youngest victim of the bombing. Her birthday was the day before. One year, one day old, Bailey Almond. She's buried right up the road at a local cemetery. And we're gonna go visit her today. This wouldn't be Eclectic South if we didn't stop by a grave. And this will be the one for this video. Which is overwhelming, this whole, I didn't show you guys hardly any of it busy, can't really make a video, but there's the car. This was the car he was driving when he was pulled over. Timothy McVeigh. Right here on this piece of road, they actually have a, a screen of the piece of road here. The car was pulled over. I'll have to do some looking. Maybe we can find out where that is. On our way back, we can stop at this very spot. They've saved literally everything from this event. In this room, we have photos of the folks that were killed on that day in each one of these little niches and personal items of theirs. On the speaker, you can hear they read the names over and over and over again in this room.
We are outside now here at the memorial. The exact spot the building stood here where this water is is the footprint. And there's the chairs. There's a chair for every victim. There's large ones and small ones. Smaller ones are for the 19 children. This tree here is probably the neatest thing I'm I'm liking. It's the survivor tree. That tree survived the blast, survived the cleanup, the rebuilding, survived everything. It was stripped of its leaves and most of its branches. It was 150 feet from ground zero. And I'm I'm a little farther than 150 feet away right now. Arborists and such has looked into it and they suspect it was started around 1920. There are photographs that have the tree in it from 1947. The survivor tree. Every year they harvest seeds from it and they've been planted around the country. They give them to the victims and survivors or rescuers. Anyone directly involved in it, they give them seeds from the tree every year. And there's seeds that produced a tree at the White House from this very tree. Bought Molly a t-shirt, Survivor Tree t-shirt in the gift shop and they sell the seeds. A little starter kit. And we bought them. So we're gonna we're gonna plant the seeds from this very tree at home. The survivor tree. So I've seen several videos on the subject and they well, multiple times have said this is an emotional experience. I didn't feel that it would be, but it, it kind of is. Police are doing donuts up there in the sky with that helicopter and your sirens. Something going on on the other side of the building.
I don't have a whole lot to say. Just this video will be just what it is. Observing, being silent. Here is part of the wall, the footprint of the federal building, if you will, the foundation which it stood. There are some those circles there where power came into the building. And these chairs, 168 of them, are squirrely within its footprint. That water you see out there is more or less was the street. like a park ranger or government employee ranger of some sort over there looks like he answers questions I've noticed that these chairs are in the footprint of this building they're randomly put in there there's a bunch together down there there's some not so much together down here I'm gonna ask him if there's any significance in that right next to the church. I bet a lot of folks went there that day and the day's coming. Maybe the workers when they took breaks from their shifts went over there, not even a block away. We're just 
sign here that says you are entering the area where the Alfred P. Murrow building once stood. The granite used on this pathway was salvaged from the Murrow building and the field of empty chairs, a tribute to the 168 Americans who were killed there April 19, 1995. The nine rows represent the nine floors. Each person's chair is positioned in the row that corresponds to the floor on which they worked or were visiting. The five westmost empty chairs honor those who were killed outside. So these granite slabs here that make up the sidewalk were actually part of the building. And I guess that answers that question on why they're positioned where they are. Friday, November the 5th. Nice day. It's been uh, pretty crappy the last three or four days. It seemed like it looked like it was 5 p.m. at all times of the day. Kind of depressed me a little bit. There's a shot of that survivor tree. I've never been to a memorial of any sort, really. Never went to the 9-11. Anything like that. And it does get you. It takes hours to get through this. A lot of neat stuff in there. Now on our way out, we will stop by the fence in which people attach things and it did even during the rescue or during the cleanup, if you will. There's something there on that corner. I don't know what that's all about. And here's the fence. This is actual chain link fence from that time. You hear the bells? When the wind changes directions, you can hear those church bells even better. That's appropriate for what we're looking at.
We are at Kolb Cemetery, just outside of Oklahoma City. We were just at the Oklahoma City Memorial, where the federal building was destroyed by a bomb in 1995, and we went through the museum and walked the grounds, and the youngest victim of the bombing, Bailey Allman, one year and one day old is buried here. So I thought we would come out here to the cemetery on the way out of town on my way back home and, and visit her for a minute. It's a pretty good sized cemetery. Lots of times finding the cemetery somebody's in is, is the easy part. Then you gotta get in here and find them. Sometimes that takes a few hours. Today, today was different. Pulled right in, parked, got out, then didn't walk 20, 30 feet, and there she was. Occasionally that happens. And I noticed she didn't have any flowers, just an empty vase, so I had to run to the gas station real quick. Get her some flowers what they had on hand and here we are in this section that she's buried in here's some more Halloween going on I don't know if she was the first infant buried in this section apparently not here's one here with the lamb from 1918 so some of these cemeteries believe it or not have a section called baby land and that's where they tend to bury the the younger folks and i don't know if that's the situation here for sure but that's what i'm seeing um, all these graves here, they do not have a beginning and end date, they just have a date. And right here at the end of those is Miss Bailey Allman. April 18th, 1994, April 19th, 1995, one year, one day. And this is the second this is the video I'm doing directly after the uh, Pretty Boy Floyd video where they chip pieces of his grave to take with them. I've never seen that before. We got that going on here. Right along here. Picture's starting to fade a little bit. Her photo being carried by a firefighter on that day was a Pulitzer Prize winning photograph. It was on newspapers and magazines everywhere. And I saw an interview with that firefighter and uh, he says he would think of what would the mother think, the parents of this child seeing them in this condition. But there we go. But her mother found comfort in it. She knew by the way that he was carrying her in the photograph that he had kids of her own, of his own. Stop by and visit Bailey and put some fresh flowers on her grave. We'll catch you on the next video.